All right. So, any questions about uh, the class of yesterday? Is I think I don't understand the latitude, you know, because that will make sense. sense to me. Yes. Mm. So. Uh, in in modern Chinese medicine, everybody sees Qing in a sort of westernized concept. And in uh, Qing Dynasty, even late Ming Dynasty, they started mm. looking at solutions because of western influence. Mm. Like what is Qing actually, what is Qi, and they tried to find a material solution for it. So at a mm. certain point they started uh, uh, analyzing this as a, as, a, as a substance that is inside your body, that's a material vision. But if you look at uh, the Chinese classical text, the way how the sentences are being constructed, then when you talk about the Jing Qi and Shen, in all three cases, you do not talk about the substance. Yeah. And for this, we have to ask ourselves a few questions. It's actually uh, a basic uh, massage to help you sensitize yourself to what your body is doing. The first thing you want to do is you want to feel your, the rhythm of your heart. So you want to feel your heart bump, bumping. You know, so you feel on the inside, you can put your heart there, hand there if you want. And you feel on the inside, and you want to feel like boom, boom, boom. Can you feel that rhythm? Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you feel that jump? Yeah. Try to put it in the So just if you put your feet on the floor, no worry. Yes. So at the moment when you feel that rhythm, right, if you put your hand on your heart, maybe it's a little bit easier. A little bit on the left side, a little bit. Oh, hang on. Yes. So at the moment when you have your hand there on the heart, uh, you can feel at a certain point like there's this boom, boom, boom on the inside. Many people have a little anxiety, so at the moment when they feel their heart, they start getting worried. So they first have to pass the worry. I don't feel it yet. Okay, so no worry. The thing is, when we go from here, gradually, now we take a little bit more time for feeling like this, but I explained already, uh, that we go to uh, the what is called the stone gate area. This is the whole chest, basically, the lungs and the space around the heart. And there's a rhythm there too. And that rhythm is half of the speed of the rhythm of the heart. Right? Then it's a buffer uh, where the stress from the outside world is not entering the heart, so that the heart is undisturbed. Right? Please, I don't feel. That's okay, we'll come in a moment. Mm -hmm. So I just try to keep on feeling while, while I'm explaining what we want to do. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So at that moment when you feel, then at this moment here you feel another another rhythm. And it's half. And when you have anxieties, these two are not synchronized. So they have to become synchronized. So it means that. Uh, when you listen to your heart and you listen to the environmental uh, uh, pulsing, then this one is half and they should go in the same rhythm. So that you can say for every two beats of your heart, one beat actually is from, from the chest area. Yes. And the third one is actually from your skin. And this is uh, where actually you do skin breathing. That's what's called skin breathing. And you feel that the pulsation of your skin, the full outer form of your body is also pulsing, is half of the one of your chest. Right? So at the moment when you pay attention to your whole body, you feel like, okay, this body is pulsing very slowly. And it's pulsing in one quarter of the speed of your heart. Right? And when you become sensitive like that, it becomes much more easy to feel the, the rhythm of the body when you're massaging. Let's try to feel it. We'll try again after lunch, so don't worry.
in right. that essence, I understand the yeah. Chi. And then we study the Li, right? Yeah, the Li, li. and the then jin. the Qing. Yeah, the Jin is a word that is very often used in uh, Tai Chi Chen. In Tai Chi Chen, uh, Kung Fu, uh -huh. uh, for the way how you transfer force. In Chinese medicine, uh, it is mentioned in the Hong Ye Jing, uh, but because they don't talk about massage techniques per se, they don't really work it out as a concept. So in the language, it is present. And um, like in the CST, we talk about particular concepts that later were replaced with other concepts, like Xu and Shu, that before they had other different concepts. And uh, But Jin is there, it's part of the way how. Uh, Chinese medicine sees that, for instance, they say, when when you cannot, when you are um, getting distracted in your mind mm -hmm. by your desires or your angers or your fears or something like this, mm -hmm. then the Qing is broken. So they see the Qing mm -hmm. as related to your morality, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. they say if your morality is broken, basically, mm -hmm. one way or the other, you don't do things right, then your Qing goes backwards, and as a result, that you get diseases because your body doesn't function properly. Uh, mm -hmm. So, getting your, and that is why in Confucianism, they, at some point, they said morality is the foundation of disease, lack of morality is the foundation of disease. Mm -hmm. And that is, there, that is one of the main roots of Chinese medicine. Mm -hmm. uh, but as a result of that, you cannot, uh, you cannot uh, perform your actions in a proper way. So that mm -hmm. means that because the jing is broken, the jin cannot take place. Mm -hmm. And that means that, uh, that when you act something, you cannot do it perfectly, you cannot transfer your power. Like, for instance, you want to lift up a cup. They need a jinn for that, right? Mm -hmm. When you talk about the jinn, that is the force to be able, or the, the, the actual the actual movement from which you reach towards your cup and then bring it to your mouth and then empty it. So it's a whole range of jinns at, uh, at the same time. Uh, but if it will be like a Tai Chi move, that's what they use in Tai Chi. And for instance, you're standing and you're standing like this, mm -hmm. and you make a move. This is a jinn. You're, you're, hold, you're grasping and you're holding, you're pulling mm -hmm. towards you. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So this is a jin. So this pulling, this is an interaction of all kind of parts of the movement. This is what the muscle challenge is about. Mm -hmm. right? And of course you have fine movements and you have coarse movements uh, in massage. Okay. So this thing is the same as a meridian, not visible? Not, no, 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 no. Jin is the way how you use how the you muscle use strength. Muscles, okay. Yes. So this is not about the strength, but it is the, 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 the action that you apply with it. Mm -hmm. Like the Li is just the strength of the movement itself. Mm -hmm. Like the, you, you talk about uh, in the Chinese medicine, talk about the liver and the spleen, and the liver and the spleen. Uh, one provides the, the muscle tissue, and the other one provides the tension of the muscle. But it's the li it's the jin that actually performs the action. So mm -hmm. if the liver is tight, mm -hmm. then the muscles are tight. If the spleen is uh, weak, if the pee is weak, then at that moment the, the muscles wither. Right. So you, they mm -hmm. do different kind of things. Right. So that has to do with the the uh, the, the presence or the the capacity to to move for the muscles. If the muscles actually move, that is a gene. Mm -hmm. Yes. If the the the, the force to requi require to make a muscle move, that's the yang, mm -hmm. right? And when the the muscle movement is done really very good, it is a chi. Right. Mm -hmm. So you see all these interactions together with each other. So then when you talk about the uh, jing chi. And then you talk about the uh, how do you say the 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 way how coherent coherence of your body produces uh, good action, right? So that's basically mm -hmm. what it translates in, in Western language at that moment. And at the moment, when you talk about uh, shen qi, you talk about the fact that the movement has a level of awareness, mm -hmm. right? So that mm -hmm. the action the action is done uh, on purpose, right? But if you have a turk, for instance, yeah, that is not on purpose. I have your shen. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So, what what has what has happened because of the influence of uh, Hegelian dialectics and uh, Hegelian perspective on science, is that they spiritualized Shun in Chinese culture, mm -hmm. and they spiritualized, no, they materialized uh, Jing, and they scientificized scientified scientified Qi. Right. So the Jing they made into a uh, material substance, the Shun they made into a spiritual substance, mm -hmm. and the uh, Qi they made into um, uh, a sort of a measurable thing, right? Like a, almost like a substance. But you know, they're willing to say like it's not really a substance, but your own energy and matter is the same. You know, these kind of reasonings that you will hear people saying, they get a little bit confused about it because they don't understand either theory or mm -hmm. But in, if you look at uh, Chinese medicine, they say, okay, the Shun is about 
the, your awareness and it has nothing to do with intelligence or anything like that so anybody can be aware to a particular kind of level like when you have uh, people who have down syndrome they can have a very strong shun because they're very aware of all kinds of things they're very acute but they're only shun so they don't they don't have the capacity to think out a strategy on the long term in the way how like you or me or something would do it mm -hmm. and uh, so they, they they lack a certain level of intelligence mm -hmm. and that intelligence is not shun right but the concept of spirit in the west implies intelligence because it's divine right so god wants it right so that is a different kind of thing and this is this is what is uh, usually seen as uh, shun in, West, in chinese medicine nowadays but at the moment when you look at uh, shun from chinese medicine perspective it's only this animal kind of alertness like uh, like the, the cat when she's sleeping she's always having one open eye open a little bit this is shun right because she's always paying attention to the environment like what's happening around this is this is shun right and the body is constructed in such a way that she continuously, because the shun is there, continuously she can get up anytime. So if you make a strange noise, she's standing up like this immediately. So there's no thinking like, is there something happening? Should I do something? Should I protect myself? No, it's immediately she's on guard, right? She's there. And uh, dogs have that to a degree too. I mean, they are a bit neurotic with that. But, uh, and all, all animals, they have this by nature. It's actually what I talked about, about awareness in the last film in this uh, movie, it's going in that direction. That Buddhism and Taoism both, they are based on the premises, like uh, there is awareness, but there's not necessarily a self. This idea of self actually elevates us on a higher level, uh, because it makes us critical about ourselves, or makes ourselves uh, making compliments about ourselves, like, oh, we are great, or something like this. Uh, but that is not the same as Shun. But what they did in modern Chinese medicine, they made the Shun the same as that. So they make it into a sort of meta consciousness. So that is that is uh, where is the difference. I mean, uh, in, when you when you talk about massage, then mm -hmm. in essence you want to develop your shun to be aware of the small changes. You don't want to think about it. So you want to develop your massage technique to such a level where you automatically implement reactions uh, of that level. That is called tai chi. Mm -hmm. Yes. So then in tai chi, the chin is. Uh, you, you don't need to think about it. So when you do the, the shaking, yeah, you, mm -hmm. when you do the bigger shaking, you want to feel the, the butt move and cause the shaking actually below you so that you do not make any work. You do not do any work. Right? So your yang is not applied for a very large degree, just enough to keep things in place and then you don't get tired. Right? Yes, that's clear? Mm -hmm. Yes, now I understand. Jin is a very complicated concept concept for many people who study Chinese medicine. Because in in, in Chinese medicine theory and schools they talk about Jin Qi Shun. They mm -hmm. they won't talk about that. Mm -hmm. And they talk about uh, blood <laughs> mm -hmm. and they talk about the difference between the liver relationship with muscles and the P relationship with muscles, but they don't really go deep in what it means. Uh, like in Chinese schools they give a citation from the Fong and Jin, which very often they don't understand themselves like I, I was uh, working no I was invited to work for a clinic in uh, Tianjin mm -hmm. and um, this guy was like but you're not Chinese so you cannot work here you cannot understand Chinese culture very well and that is to a degree that's really true but then he started waving all kind of citations from the Hong Beijing around my head and at some point I was like okay if you have to use so many citations how much do you actually understand of what it says in the Hong Beijing yeah, because this is where is the problem at some point. So we had a very nice, interesting philosophical discussion. I didn't get the job because I was a Westerner. Um, but uh, um, it was really like uh, uh, interesting to see that actually in the in the citation culture of Chinese medicine, they actually forget to think about what it means because of the modernizations of the of the Chinese language. So they, they're obliged to put everything in the citation referring to the Hong Beijing. But they don't necessarily always have read the Hongi Jing themselves. So it's the same. Like the other time we were talking about Hongi Jing, and I found this citation in the Hongi Jing that I I read about o over it like tens of times about the relationship between the therapist and the and the and the client. Remember what I said? Like when he said in the Hongi Jing uh, that uh, the therapist has to identify with the client to be able to do its work. These are these are small things that are in the Hong Yijing, but you never see them as citations in modern Chinese medicine. But they are there. Yeah. 
that because they've all, all done through the same cycles. So that there's a big problem. And Westerners, they usually read a translation that is made comfortable for the reader, not necessarily what the Holy Regime says. Mm -hmm. And there are a few very famous examples for it. There's a uh, master who is Taoist from, uh, the, from Taiwan. He made a translation of how the Holy Regime, and you never see where he is uh, correct, correcting the Holy Regime or making his own remarks on the Holy Regime, or where he actually translates the Holy Regime. Uh, so he, when he explained, he, he translated a chapter in English, right? And then all of a sudden he talks about buses. And there's no buses in the Holy Regime. <laughs> right? mm -hmm. But then he, he, one way or the other, he gets something and he starts putting his own things in there, but he makes no separation between the translation and his commentaries. So this is what very often happens. There's another one. Um, I think maybe I have it here. No, I don't have it here. It's a Holy Regime. I first used uh, when I opened the, the school in the, in the past. It was a very thick one. It was very interesting for a Western because all of a sudden you had a Chinese and a Western text next to each other. But the Chinese text and the Western text, they didn't match. Or many, many, many notations. Translation issues. Because of translation issues. They were, they were a Chinese government translation team, so they also had to put the propaganda. Yes. <laughs> Chinese have put it, their own translations uh, cannot be translated exactly the way was it originally. Exactly. Yeah. So as a Western, it's very difficult to get. And uh, Paul also does quite a good job. No. You want? No, 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 yes. Uh, Paul also does quite a good job, but there's still some some things that are so deeply rooted now in Western literature about uh, Chinese uh, language that some things you can't avoid, like translating Xi's energy is like a standard thing, but the word energy only exists since the 50s. Then it has only become popular since the 90s, since the 90s. So uh, it's, it is not uh, something that exists in any other language as a concept, in any other culture. <laughs> So Regin, this is like one of the words that still has to become known, I think, with Westerners, the Chinese also. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, you mentioned that the Panchi, when you draw on the St. John Meridians, the Panchi, where that come from? The puncture when you're learning? Like yeah, when learning. Oh, it changed method, standards, uh, learning method. You can never puncture somebody else with a method that is not used on yourself okay. first. That yeah. is uh, coming from Shanu. <coughs> oh, okay. uh, Shanu uh, said like you cannot, uh, as morality for Chinese medicine, because he's a founder of morality of Chinese medicine. Mm -hmm. yeah, and so he's that is for self, like an ask. You puncture yourself. That's not bad. Well, it can be bad. Oh. Depends on what house you have your heart. Oh, okay, so yeah. it's just only the parties purpose, right or not? No, it can be anywhere on your body. Can be anywhere on your body. Don't have to be down. Okay. No, he had me puncturing my leg yesterday. My thigh. The thing is that you have to understand how body works and what is the effect. Like, if you if you if you try tea, you become a tea monster. You drink tea, right? If you become a herbalist, you eat herbs because otherwise you can't understand what it is. Like, for instance, if you read learn herbs, this is a just take one. It's just a, you want to understand the herb, just, just, take a piece of the, just take one piece, no, no, just take one piece. This is rock, right, it's herb, really? Just take a, I thought it was a sugar, it's a rock. Just one, yeah, it's a rock, just take one piece. Can I have one? Okay. Yes. Put it in your mouth. Put it in your mouth, really? Yeah, I'm this is scared. how you learn, this is how you learn Chinese medicine. Just put it in your mouth. Just don't swallow it. Well, then you put it in your mouth. Doesn't taste anything, this rock. It does taste like something, but you have to learn how to taste. Mm -hmm. So, Chinese medicine practitioners first have to learn how to taste. Mencius already said, uh, Qi is about the taste of things. Right? Mm -hmm. So, at the moment when you have it on your tongue, you feel that it does something with your tongue. Right? So, you slowly become aware that you feel it's cool. Yeah. This is a shikor, right? Yeah, just put it in your mouth. Uh, I did it, I just tasted it. <laughs> I'm no? scared to put it in the mouth. <laughs> no worries, it's only one piece. So what is this for? Just try. <laughs> <laughs> You're scared, right? But all Chinese medicine learning was like this. Mm. So when you would go into the field to learn about herbs, right? Which are Pick and taste myself. Taste, taste and eat. Because you also have to learn the antidote at the same time. Okay. 
I actually saw that in the Chinese movie that Herbalist they go mountain collecting them. Yeah, they look the book with the leaf and then also taste it. Yeah. They take the exactly. taste. Exactly. Yeah, so this, this is how Chinese medicine works. The app that I'm building about uh, food medicine mm -hmm. is teaching this. Mm -hmm. How do you how do you create Is this gonna dissolve? No, it's not going to be resolved. I know. <laughs> but what is it this is to go for? I forget it. That is when we bad. use the two food that we will uh, use this. Mm -hmm. This to, to help you. This to help you uh, reduce dampness in your body. Oh, reduce the dampness. Yeah. Well, it certainly cleared the uh, taste of the chocolate. Definitely, because it's a really like a cleaning material. Mm -hmm. There's cooling at mm -hmm. the same time. Cool. Cool. Right, not like Gibson, but it's cooling. Mm -hmm. So the moment when you swallow it, it just goes through your intestines, and you know, of course, it's safe. And the thing is, what you learn in herbal medicine before, before the Song Dynasty. Mm -hmm. You learn that you need only very small amounts of herbs, right? Mm -hmm. By putting something in your mouth, chewing on a piece of wood, having only one, two, three ingredients, you actually cure a problem. But what I did in the Song Dynasty, they create big recipes on the academies. Mm -hmm. And these big recipes, they were very complicated, and they very often had to uh, counter effect all the negative effects from having so many herbs in your body mm -hmm. to create the soups. And the Chinese government does the same. But they add to it that you should also learn all the chemical qualities of it, so that they start reconstructing all the herbs so that they fit in with Western medicine models, so they create new formulas. So formulas with the same name as classical formulas now have different herbs inside, because now it fits better with the Western medicine model. But it is then more like orthomolecular medicine, where they put different kind of chemicals together, so then Chinese medicine becomes like a Chinese orthomolecular medicine. What's the uh, what's this metallic taste? That's the stuff. But what? How would you describe it? Because there's the metallic. five flavors. Yeah, metallic. So okay. <laughs> then it would relate to the metal thing, or yeah, this this is supposed to be a part of the metal, but it's not like this is not how you classify it. Okay, I don't know how to. You classify it on the on the is it cold or warm? Is it uh, expanding or contracting? Or does it go up? Or does it go down? Mm -hmm. um, then to which pathogen does it relate to? Mm -hmm. uh, is what, what is it, what could it be a counter agent to? Mm -hmm. So this is the learning process of herbal medicine. Okay. So if it's making phlegm, what what does that mean? If the phlegm comes out, yeah. mm -hmm. then that's good. Okay. Because that's part of what it does. It binds phlegm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Can we practice now? We are already mm -hmm. busy studying now on the okay. thing because mm -hmm. in the massage it's the same. You want to be a catalyzer as a, as, a, as a therapist, you want to catalyze the, the treatment. So when, you're, when you are really pressing inside, uh, inside somebody's body, mm -hmm. so your gene actually tries to conquer a person or a problem, mm -hmm. and at that moment you are catalyzing, you are be, being a hammer, you can say. Mm -hmm. right? And at the moment when you practice a method like this, you are a catalyzer, you mm -hmm. allow the body to change by itself. So you mm -hmm. give the client freedom instead of if you put them into a framework. If you Did you get this mm -hmm. at the park? Yes, <laughs> actually, it's just really? at the garden center. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's your friend. No, it's your friend. <laughs> You're getting really worried now. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, you never know it yet. <laughs> <laughs> so with needling also the same. And then when putting the needle in your body, uh, you, the needle has to be a catalyzer. It shouldn't force, like modern Chinese medicine, mm -hmm. like uh, dry needling in uh, Western medicine. Mm -hmm. These are methods that try to force things. They're military methods. That's why in Chinese medicine they're called military methods. But uh, the civil methods, they are you, you work more like a catalyzer. So it's more gentle in a way. Yes. Mm -hmm. But it's also more gentle to yourself. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a big difference. That's a culture difference. And Chinese society used to be a civil society. Now China is a military society. It's very different. Mm -hmm. I like that. Do you like it? Yeah, it, it gives me the same effect when I eat fennel and yeah. then I drink water. Yeah. Yeah. There's like, wow. Yeah. The water tastes yeah. so good after. <laughs> you really don't trust it, right? <laughs> okay. I don't have the second rock.